Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the first Aperio conference of the Aperio 2013. You can see you were here. My name is Ian Dolphin, Executive Director of the Aperio Foundation. I want to give you a bit of conference information first, and then very quickly run through some of the high points of the last year, of course, the state of the foundation and the state of the community. Uh, I will be speaking again in more detail on some of these points on Thursday morning if you're, uh, if you're still around. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank our gold sponsors, Asahina International and Longsight. Uh, these events would be a lot more expensive for you and for me if this fo these folks did not provide the, uh, the help they do. So I'd like to start off by getting everybody to wake up and give our gold sponsors and our other sponsors a round of applause. <laughs> Bit of housekeeping. Uh, if you've not got the password, uh, there it is. Suggested to me that if we were going for a mascot for a perio, we might choose an A. <laughs> Accept the charges on the Wi-Fi that we take off your bill at the end of the, uh, the week and the meeting rooms are not secured so please bear that in mind and don't leave valuables there. Um, I'm here to welcome you but we're all here to welcome Aperio so I thought I'd just let a New Jersey resident say something. <laughs> But it's here. I think mergers in the corporate world are very different to mergers in communities like ours. It has taken a long time to reach that point, but we have brought the community, our communities, with us. And I think that's important. These things take uh, as long as they take. So here we are, we are focused on support for academic mission delivery. Uh, that means the user facing stuff and the infrastructure to support it. Why the infrastructure? Well, quite frankly, I think the most complex use cases from that in, for that infrastructure are actually driven by the academic delivery software. So we're a combination of J6 applications and infrastructure and Sakai's teaching, learning, and research focus. And your presence in the room is a very strong signal, I think, for the future about how we're managing to combine those areas and learn from one another. Uh, we're a larger organization. Around two thirds of our member institutions and other organizations are still in the United States. But we are growing outside the United States considerably. Clusters there in Europe, in South Africa, in Japan. Uh, we're looking at and um, working on opportunities in Latin America and in India. You may have seen news of the Mexico conference recently that you rather organized a strong event, a uh, second event that we've held in Mexico. And we're looking to expand that in the coming period. We're also not just about the linear growth of our organization. Important though that is, we do want to recruit new institutional and commercial partners. Uh, but we're about building relationships with other communities <coughs> and working together constructively and practically with them. So last year, uh, we signed a, a three-way uh, three memorandum of understanding with the ASO Portai Consortium uh, in France. Aperio uh, has inherited them. Uh, one of the leading members of the Ace of Post High Consortium, Alan Mayo, was elected independently to the board of Aperio, and that's helped a great deal. Ace is a consortium of 73 French universities that uh, adapt open source software, uh, localize that software, contribute to internationalization efforts, uh, and contribute, are now contributing software code to. Uh, U Mobile, for example. Uh, for the Sakai CLE, there's been an interesting development in France this year as the French Ministry of Higher Education and Research 
have selected the CLE as the platform for an experimental MOOC serving all of French higher education. Now that's adoption, but adoption, as we know, is the beginning of wisdom. We want to build a culture of contribution, and that word that you'll hear me say more than once this week. But adoption is the beginning of the path to contribution, and I think that is a signal example of how the kind of relationship that we have developed with ASA over the years is now bringing stuff into our community. 80% uh, of French higher education is also rather a large figure. There's an interesting story there, and there's an ASA session where you can learn more about that interesting story. Uh, we have a new board elected uh, in part from the two previous organizations and in part in an election in January this year. So there's the collection of, uh, of mugshots um, from the folks who didn't manage to escape. It's the most global board I've worked with. Uh, I have been a, a former member of the Sikai Project and Foundation Board and a former member of the JSIC Board over the last decade. Uh, it's the most global board I've worked with. We have members from Japan, from France, from Australia, the United Kingdom, the United States. Uh, there's a spread of institutions, research intensives, and other kinds of institutions. There's a mix there of CIOs, uh, senior managers, and of software developers, academic staff, learning technologists. So in many ways, it's the most diverse board I've worked with. But looking at those pictures, you will see we still lack a little on certain aspects of diversity. And I'm not going to preempt Theresa's keynote because Theresa I was going to speak to that very subject uh, uh, later this morning after myself. In terms of foundation priorities uh, for the coming period, well, the first priority runs through all our work. We <laughs> will focus on the projects and on the software communities that provide value for our institutions. And in terms of our current priorities, uh, we have I'll read it, shall I? We have to complete some legal work, and you'd be pleased to know that I'm about to spend 15 minutes detailing that legal work. <laughs> uh, we have uh, a redeveloped website, the first stage of a redeveloped website. The next stage is going to move some, uh, some, some of the projects in there, and our intention is really to turn that website into a community hub. We're going to begin this week the process of looking at the infrastructure that supports the work we do, particularly the work in software development, and find a path to rationalizing that. We are undergo under What's underway at the moment in, in terms of incubation is a review of the incubation process. So a little bit more about that. Uh, we are putting in place an advisory council uh, with senior figures from global higher education to help keep us honest, to be our early warning system and our radar and to help inform our work. Uh, and the board has been, uh, been under undertaking a strategic planning process. You can find out more about that this morning and more at the, at the AGM uh, tomorrow. So the new website we're developing in stages. The first stage of that redevelopment was live yesterday, I think. As I, as I said, a, a focal point for the community, a community hub. One of the things you'll notice there is content from the Spanish community, from the Japanese community, from the South African community. Uh, we're growing content for all the communities we serve. There is going to be space there for the e-portfolio community, for the learning and teaching community, as it re-energizes itself in, in the coming year. We intend the website to be a focal point. And we will be setting up uh, an advisory group for that later in the year to, to help steer it. That's going to be a mix of board and other community members, so watch out for, for news of that. Uh, the advisory council that I mentioned, yeah. Michael Feldstein, stand up Michael. Anybody who doesn't know Michael, there he is. Michael Feldstein <coughs> is taking point on putting that together for us. There'll be a statement on the website about that this week. 
if you have suggestions for folks who can uh, who can help in that work, then please mail them to, to Michael or myself. Uh, I actually Googled for a, a, a photograph of, uh, of Michael for this presentation, and I, was, uh, <laughs> I found some interesting results. I mean, I can see the pictures of Michael there, and I can see Casey Green, and I can kind of see the connection, but I'm not quite sure what that one is about. Is there anything we should know? <laughs> so there's also the board strategic statement that I mentioned in detail. There's a section in that on the role of the board and some interesting ideas about the nature of the, the organization that we're developing. And we, we put this statement out to facilitate dialogue. So let's have a conversation around this week when it appears on the, uh, on the website. We're looking in that at how a Perio fits the higher education landscape, about the Perio portfolio of projects, about incubation in the software lifecycle, and some priorities for, uh, for immediate action. More on that on, uh, on Thursday morning. Incubation really is an essential piece of how we support the software lifecycle. And it's a piece that really moves from an activity from the very early stages of being a good idea to the stage of being sustainable and supported. That's why we're paying so much attention to this at, uh, at an early stage. Part of that review is an online survey. You can again find a link to this from the incubation page on the Aperio website. Please, if you can find some time during the course of this week, let us know your opinion by completing the survey. Or not completing, just contribute to it. If there are questions there that you don't feel you want to answer, skim over them. But the more opinions and perspectives from the community we get, the better that process will, uh, will be. There's also a session this afternoon where we can have a conversation about the early results of, uh, of that work. This week you will be able to find out an awful lot about uh, our projects and our software communities. Uh, not time for me here to do anything other than give you a 20,000 foot view of some of the highlights of those projects over the, uh, over the last year. Uportal has grown both committers and portal contributors. Over the, uh, over the last year, seeing work around calendaring integration, notification portlets, event tracking and analytics tools, uh, and seven, uh, seven patch releases. We have some energy in mobile work. I mentioned the ASAP contributions to the U Mobile Initiative. Uh, we've seen deployments of uh, both the applications built on U Mobile and the web deployments. We've seen contributions from ASAP and elsewhere. And in the Sakai CLE world, we've seen the start of Project Katai, which is a project based at developing really back-end services to support better mobile interfaces. And one of the positive things, of course, of the last six months has been an entirely natural, not forced tendency for these projects to begin to communicate and to learn from one another. And that's the kind of culture that we seek to, uh, we seek to create. Uh, beadwork, there is a presentation on beadwork this week, but there is actually something of, uh, of a clash. There's a major calendaring uh, standards conference in California this week, so the, many of the beadwork folks are there. Uh, we clearly need some better scheduling solutions for, uh, for that kind of thing. <laughs> An event registration module added, solar indexing built in, some new adopters. Interestingly, uh, two public libraries highlighted there in terms of big work adoption. Uh, and the incorporation of a separate project scheduling assistance into big work as a project in a software community. So if you're interested in this as an area, seek out their, their session uh, and uh, head towards it. The Sakai collaboration and learning environment. 2.9 is a major release, but it's also fair to say that we've had you know, two point releases as well as the major release this year. 
performance improvements, look and feel improvements, lessons from Rutgers originally, now part of Core, lots and lots of improvements uh, across the piece. We've also seen some uh, new adoptions. NYU has recently uh, completed its transition from Blackboard to the CLE, a major school. Um, and we're seeing an interesting level of experimentation around the CLE as a potential move platform. I mentioned the national initiative in France, but HEC Montreal and the University of Amsterdam are also exploring that, that space. There are opportunities to go to sessions provided by all of those schools this week. And there's also a birds of a feather session where I hope we can try and generalize some of the, uh, some of the early, uh, early lessons. CAS, a single, widely used single sign-on solution. General release with continued improvements. Very widely adopted in, uh, in higher ed and outside. Frequently, a piece of software which is invisible, uh, which you do not see, but you certainly see the effect of uh, and the convenience of. You do actually see it, as you know, you, you're probably aware that I travel a little bit. If you stay in a Hilton hotel and log onto the web and look very carefully, you can see where CAS is being used there for, uh, for signing up to internet services. Uh, better make a note to talk to them about security as well. An ecosystem of, of open source extensions around CAS, and most importantly, new committers coming on board. New committers from, uh, from outside uh, North America, in particular in, in France. Open academic environment, uh, excuse me, spend no more than three minutes talking about this. <laughs> we saw departures of project partners from this project last summer. This happens in projects. Partners leave. Things that were aligned fall out of alignment. That's natural. But really, after those departures, OE did look very carefully at meeting the challenge of scalability that faced it, selected a new technology stack, and during the course of the last year has made very, very significant progress that you can, you can hear about this week. A new partner for the project, Maris College, uh, and the project now wants to be known as the period of an academic environment. And when the incubation process is reworked and we initiate that, Sakai Perry uh, OAE will, uh, will go into incubation. I think there are some interesting questions around what's happened to OAE over the course of the last year or two. <coughs> some interesting questions about how we invest in development as a community, whether very large investments make projects brittle in the current circumstances and find higher education in pretty much globally, and whether a smaller project can't sometimes, at the initial stage, achieve rather more. Now, they're not the only questions that we're going to pose, and this is a set of themes that I will be returning to uh, on Thursday morning. But I think it's something to reflect on during the course of the week because we don't have a fixed way of doing projects because, quite frankly, that would be silly. Projects have different objectives, they work in different contexts, and there's no universal model that guarantees success. So it's important we reflect on experiences like OE and assimilate the lessons like that. But that's a strand of, of conversation uh, this week. And as I said, I'll return to that on, uh, on Thursday. So this week is about the career, which means it's about you. It's about those who can't be here, but who participate in our communities. It's worthwhile noting, I mentioned the Mexico conference, that we've had half a dozen conferences this year already with between 350 and 400 participants in Japan, in South Africa, in Europe, uh, in France, in Mexico. Uh, we talk uh, a lot about code contributions of necessity. 
but active participation in our communities can take a variety of forms. And it's important to, to keep that in our heads. It can be a contribution of time and expertise in many, many areas other than code. And really those contributions are as essential to making us success, successful as a community. Uh, we really are about valuing diversity, uh, diversity of perspectives and building a culture of contribution. I think that this week marks a vital stage in a journey. Uh, welcome again and have a great week. And we're gonna do one of those transitions now of laptops as I introduce Theresa Rowe, CIO of Oakland University, is going to speak about challenges and encouragement of women in IT. Does it really matter? Thank you very much for your attention.